Welcome to part 12 of the lecture on designing organic syntheses. Subject of today are heterocycles, non-aromatic heterocycles. So, and let us begin with uh, three membered heterocycles. Which one comes to your mind? Of course, uh, epoxides. And you can easily synthesize epoxides regularly from olefins by the so-called epoxidation reaction, of course. So you do, you can achieve an epoxidation with uh, peroxides, for instance, metachloro, perbenzoic acid, MCP. BA, also with, uh, for instance, tertiary butyl hydroperoxide, and in uh, the case of alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compounds, <coughs> then H2O2. Hydrogen peroxide in combination with uh, sodium hydroxide in aqueous solution will also give a transformation to the epoxide, then a special functionalized epoxide. Well, the mechanism I think you should know. <coughs> so the peroxide, the hydrogen peroxide is deprotonated in equilibrium. This is the nucleophile. Attacking the alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl and then it's Just the enolate <coughs> reacting intramolecularly with uh, the <coughs> hydroperoxo group, group and that's the mechanism of uh <coughs> this reaction. So for the direct epoxidation of an olefin, also this interesting oxidizing reagent is highly interesting. Dimethyl dioxyrane You can produce that in situ from acetone and um, a peroxo sulfate uh, triple salt. It's called caro 8 or as a trademark oxone. You can generate that in situ, but you can also not isolate it, but uh, isolate uh, acetone dimethyl dioxyrane mixture just by distillation under reduced pressure. No problem. 
And what is interesting, there is <coughs> also the possibility to form chiral dioxyranes. For instance, this one. This chiral ketone is easily synthesized in two or three steps from sugars. And then you can form in situ the dioxyrain, and it will transfer the oxygen enantio selectively. And this reaction is called the Xi epoxidation, developed by my dear colleague Yian Xi. So, <coughs> let's go on with aziridines. These are three membered nitrogen heterocycles. Well, reaches synthetic analysis. Then can lead us, for instance, to that combination olefin plus a nitrine. Well, you can also think about something like that and the leaving group X here. So, but uh, this method is well, quite popular. So, <coughs> one example how to get to a nitrine. Just treating with a base, you can achieve an alpha elimination. Which should, this should remind you of the alpha elimination in uh, chloroform uh, generating dichlorocarbene. So, deprotonating here, and then you have a nice stabilized anionic leaving group here. And it will then smoothly produce that nitrine. And if you do so in the presence of an appropriate olefin, it should already be present, then this nitrine is trapped by the olefin. giving rise to this final product. Another interesting method is transforming
an epoch site to the corresponding aziridine, and there is a rather nice two-step method. You treat this epoch site with uh, sodium azide in ethanol under buffered reaction conditions, ammonium chloride. This will lead to this uh, <coughs> azide. And now, treating this with triphenylphosphine in acetonitrile, then triphenylphosphine is a reducing agent. It will be oxidized to triphenylphosphine oxide. Molecular nitrogen will be formed and this ziridine and this two-step procedure was proven to deliver this highly strained product in 61% yield. The corresponding three-membered sulfur heterocycles are also known. The thiorines with this parent structure. Well, one can think about synthesizing that from this setup, a thiol and in better position, a leaving group, just treating with a base. Yes, it will work under high dilution. You, of course, can get oligomeric or polymeric product in the competing reaction. It is also possible to target these sulfur heterocycles by treating epoxides, for instance, with thiourea actually this is similar to that one here because if these react together what will happen this is the nucleophile and it will open up the epoxide So, <coughs> what will happen next? Well, I'm just guessing, but it's, I think, an educated guess. Nucleophilic center, electrophilic center. Mm. 
Mm, sorry. Five membered ring. So then a hetero cleavage will take place here. So, and now have a look. Here we have the thiolate, there the leaving group. And the thiorane is formed plus just urea as, well, the co-product. But this erythrosynthetic uh, <coughs> disconnection is also, I think, a nice idea. Let us assume we have a thio ketone and let this react, for instance, with just the parent carbene methylene. This idea has been proven to work out well. Here we have the thioketone, which has been tested. With this diazo, compound. If I remember it correctly, well, I, I, I'm not sure, was it uh, under thermal or photochemical conditions, but at least it is important that you don't have that uh, CH3 group here. If a free carbene is formed and you would have a CH3 group, then um, CH insertion would occur and olefin would be formed, but the CF3 uh, group, uh, well, doesn't allow the insertion into a carbon fluoride bond. So, <coughs> a carbene or a carbene equivalent is reacting with this final product with a 68% yield. Let's change to four-membered rings. Four-membered hydrocycles. Acetidines
one could think about a disconnection like this. Or just leaving group X, X here. plus primary amine and uh, treating with a base. In principle, this works. And this could derive from, wow, well, this alcohol, however, this of course has some tendency to form a lactone. Essentially, we could start from such a lactone. The oxetanes are the corresponding oxygen heterocycles. And I think it should be known what is the preferred way to synthesize oxetanes it's a photochemical pathway called the paterno Büchi reaction. Photochemically, as I said, and in this case, we would combine isobutene with uh, benzaldehyde. Well, you might notice that this is kinetically favored and certainly not the thermodynamically favored product. Thermodynamically favored would be this one with that dimethylmethylene group far away from the other uh, steric uh, demand, sterically demanding group, the phenyl group. Yeah? However, you can assume di radicalic intermediate like that, and uh, this is therefore with this di radical preferred to other possible di radicals. This is the preferred reactive intermediate, the kinetically favored one. Five membered rings five membered heterocycles. So let's try this as an exercise. Please try to make a suggestion how to synthesize this molecule. So one suggestion I have seen was 
to um, <coughs> disconnect here. Yes, it, it would work. This is quite OK, but please don't forget that this reaction does not work. Why? Because of Baldwin rules. This is a five endotric cyclization, which does not work according to Baldwin because. Well, the free electron pairs of the oxygen have to reach above that double bond, and this doesn't fit. On the other hand, with the bigger sulfur, it again works. This kind of reactions have been tested in similar structures. However, let's call that R1. Should be a good idea to choose this position as for the disconnection. We have a 1-3 relationship between two carbonyl groups. And please remember donator reactivity here, acceptor reactivity there, and we can translate that easily to this synthetic equivalent. Deprotonating at this position alpha to that ester. Well, this is then an ester condensation, and intramolecularly we call that then a Diekmann condensation. just treating with sodium ethanolate and ethanol. Uh, well, okay. Better in this case with sodium methanolate and methanol since we want to have a methyl ester. <laughs> Otherwise we would get the ethyl ester. So we should hope for this position to be deprotonated easier, to be more acidic, although well, here the sulfur is sitting, making it more acidic due to the electrophilicity of the sulfur. On the other hand, we have, uh, <coughs> well, we have those free electron pairs and uh, free electron pairs here, deprotonating there would mean repulsion. So I'm not sure what will happen in that case, but one just has to try. So if we don't get this product in that case, then
This one is the competing one. So we would get either this product or that. However, if we would target for this molecule, then we, this is not necessary that we care, do we get this one or that? Because after hydrolysis and decarboxylation, we get always this product, okay? I think this is clear. So another five-membered heterocycle. We are targeting for a racemate of this heterocycle. A 1,3 dipolar cyclo addition processes the solution to the problem, the so called mm, Husken cyclo addition. We need an olefin and a 1,3 dipole. This concerted process solves the problem of uh, diastereoselectivity. You just have to start from the trans olefin and you will have these two substituents trans to each other at that heterocycle and in this case you have a nitrile oxide as the 1,3 dipole Here's the 1,2 dipolar mesomeric structure drawn. So, and where do you get that from? <coughs> from the corresponding oxime chloride or oxime bromide <coughs> the oxime of gluoxylic acid ester you can oxidatively chlorinate or brominate and then you just need a base triethylamine, for instance, in equilibrium it's deprotonated here, and this chloride then is eliminated. There are lots of others of other five-membered heterocycles which can be made uh, by a one uh, three dipolar cyclo addition reaction. You should look out for various uh, one three dipoles. Maybe we make uh, one lesson about uh, 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 this type of reaction uh, and concentrate on this type of reaction then. Let's now change to six-membered rings.
for this case, the retrosynthetic analysis is fairly easy. Such enamines we have already discussed. That these are formed by a condensation reaction with a corresponding carbonyl compound. So, we could disconnect here Acceptor reactivity here, donator reactivity there. So, synthetic equivalent for this could be such a strained acetidine. But maybe it's easier to think about a change in the functional group here. Let's change the oxidation state. to a nitrile. Then this disconnection is straightforward. Just Michael addition process. In the presence of a base with acrylonitrile. And maybe we find a catalyst which could hydrogenate the nitrile in presence of these carbonyl groups. Actually, this seems to be a problem, I think. However, Maybe we could deprotonate here and have an enolate or well, for instance a TMS enolate. Structure like that, relatively electron rich here, electron poor there then it should be no problem to find a catalyst which is selective for the hydrogenation of the cyano group. Uh, clearly favored this hydrogenation compared to the hydrogenation of uh, that carbonyl there. The last two examples for today. First idea, of course, should be disconnection here and disconnection there, conjugate addition of ammonia to that alpha beta unsaturated ketone twice the reaction 
should not be much of a problem. And it is possible under basic reaction conditions to get the condensation done of three units of acetone to form this. Please remember here we have <coughs> mesityl oxide as the monocondensation product. Actually getting the second one there is uh, not that easy selectively because uh, you have a nice uh, um <coughs> acidity also here, forming the linear really conjugated an iron preferred to this one here. Okay, but <coughs> with the right reaction conditions you will get uh, quite a lot of, of uh, that target here. <coughs> this is mesityl oxide while this is mesityline. Mesityline is also an aldol condensation product of acetone. You can achieve that under acidic conditions and maybe at home you can figure out the mechanism how is this structure set up from acetone. Now to the last structure for today to be analyzed and again as an exercise please make a suggestion. If we follow also in this case the basic idea we have discussed here then we would get to these two starting compounds. However, this one looks like it would, uh, it would have a distinct uh, tendency for polymerization. And uh, therefore, question mark for this starting material. There is one very simple solution which has also been tested and works quite nicely. Remember that you can synthesize various ketones by just uh, hydrolyzing and uh, decarboxylating the corresponding beta keto esters. And we've discussed an example for the Diekmann condensation today already. And this example is especially nice because these two moieties are identical. So, benzyl amine plus two equivalents of acrylic acid ester will work just fine. Maybe another idea for targeting the structure
one should always look for a heterocycle or a carbocycle in favor of uh, synthesizing that cycle. Maybe we can start from a pyridine derivative like that for hydroxypyridine. Maybe this works. An alkylation and then reduction. Maybe this is also an idea which could work. Just an idea, I didn't check. Has this been done? However, well, there are more than, certainly more than one way to synthesize a molecule like that. Thanks for listening for today. Next lecture will take place next week, Wednesday. We will discuss the synthesis of aromatic heterocycles. Mm -hmm.